Hello, in this video tutorial on 12 tone triads, you will learn about sets that include both regular and modal trichords. We'll study hexachord combinations and polychord properties. I'll demonstrate chord progressions with these triad sets and short composition examples. In part 1 and 2 from this series, I talked about 12 tone triad sets with regular triads and thirds. This episode briefly returns to the fundamental set properties and then continues with sets that also contain modal triads, that is, trichords with a second interval. You will learn the properties of four such sets and, as usual, I'll create chord progressions and demonstrate the application in short composition examples through instrumental form design. The fundamentals are illustrated with the example 12 tone triad set from part 1. We'll use the keyboard, pitch class diagram, and staff notation in our analysis. 12 tone triad sets consist of four trichords that together cover all 12 chromatic pitch classes, as shown here. In the previous episodes, these were regular triads and thirds, that is, containing four and three semitone intervals. In this part, we'll add trichord types that have the interval of the major or minor second, and that are called modal triads here. The four additional chord types are the sus4, the 2, the Lydian, and the Phrygian modal triad. From the previous episodes, remember that there is a limited number of these triad sets, either with regular triads only, or also with modal trichords. This tutorial is about the latter type. This is the summary of hexachord combinations and polychord properties as presented in the previous parts. The triads from the 12 tone set may be combined pairwise into hexachords. When the two triads in the hexachord are stacked in a polychord, there are multiple permutations. Analyzing the triad pairs in the hexachord yields the equivalent 6 element pitch class set, with corresponding interval class vector and Hindemith chord group label. This has to do with chord tension level classification. I use the Paul Hindemith chord type classification scheme into one of 6 groups, based on the hexachord interval content. The Eulela chord tension level can be determined for a given polychord voicing and will lie between UTL 3 and 9. Inspecting the six numbers in the interval class vector shows that the majority of hexachords lie in the highly dissonant Hindemith chord group 4, with some in HG3. You will have to revisit the earlier episodes for more details. Here we see the four 12 tone triad sets that contain combinations of regular triads in thirds and modal trichords. Regular triads are the major, minor, and diminished chord. The modal trichords are the S2, S4, and the Lydian and Phrygian structures. Let's continue with a further analysis and application examples of these four sets. The first set contains the four trichord structures listed and shown here in staff notation, with the major triad on root C. You may want to check that this combination covers all 12 pitch classes. When looking at the diagram with the four triads at the corner points, remember that there are three possible combinations into hexachords. The first is the hexachord pair S1 plus S2 versus S3 and S4. Here note how all hexachord combinations in the first modal 12 tone triad set yield five different pitch class sets, with cardinal number 6. Prime form labels and corresponding interval class vectors are shown. We obtain a chord dissonance classification into Hindemith group 4, since the hexachords contain one or two tritone intervals, plus many dissonant second intervals. We are dealing with highly dissonant polychords. When stacking triads into polychords, there is a total of 12 permutations, 4 for each combination, as shown by the colored squares in this diagram. For the first modal 12 tone triad set, here we see the 12 polychord permutations and staff notation, with example 6 part voicings. 
The stacking order is shown above the staff and I've marked the highly dissonant minor 2nd, major 7th or minor 9th intervals. Open semitone interval classes lead to a high Eulela chord tension level. Listen to the four permutations of the first pairwise triad combination. Chord and PC set labels are indicated below the staff. Next we listen to the polychord permutations for combination 2. Note the use of close and open voicing and the use of triad inversion, which are tools for fine tuning the chord tension. And here is the final set of 4 permutations for the polychords in combination 3. We'll create a chord progression from these highly dissonant polychords, or, as Schillinger calls it, a chord structure continuity. The first example is a short phrase that uses two pairwise triad combinations and one stacking permutation per combination. For this polychord progression we design what's called an instrumental form, the next step towards real music, in this case a chamber music phrase for trumpet and piano. In the trumpet part we'll use a Schillinger rhythm, as generated by the interference process of two clocks ticking at 5 and 12 time intervals. That yields the attack duration series shown here in 8 note time units and played by the cymbal, with the kick drum supporting the underlying 12-8 meter. As a refinement we'll split the longer 5 time unit durations into smaller 3 plus 2 time units. These so called split unit groups are played by a tom. Finally, we rewrite the example rhythm in 6 8 time signature, a process called grouping in Schillinger rhythms. The result is what we see here, the example instrumental form for the first modal 12 tone triad set. The Schillinger rhythm is in the trumpet part that uses two pitches from the upper triad, while the piano accompaniment is based on the remaining four lower parts. The second modal 12 tone triad set has two regular triads and two modal trichords. Again we start with the major triad on root C, which yields the roots for the other three structures. The analysis of this set using the diagrams shows that now we have six different PC sets that again all lie in Hindemith group 4, a common characteristic for all modal 12 tone triad sets. The subtle difference lies in the number of minor and major second intervals in the set and that property yields limited dissonance control potential when creating a chord progression. You'll now see a chord continuity for set number 2, using all 12 polychord stacking permutations, and after 3 permutations there is a change of tonic, based on the symmetric octave division into roots C, E and A flat. And here is the continuity and diagram. Note that I've used multiple triads in either upper or lower layer, with a static structure in the other. Still, each of the four groups contains all 12 chromatic scale pitch classes. The upper half shows symbolic chord structures, in the lower half you'll find the actual triads. The voice leading is mostly stepwise and I use a mix of close and open position voicing. 
Below the staff there are the PCZ prime form label and the Hindemith root by identifying the lowest consonant perfect fifth in the voicing. The root series in this continuity, when interpreted in terms of Schillinger chromatic root cycles, tells us something about the tonal stability and cadential quality of this otherwise highly dissonant chord progression. Listen to the continuity. For this chord progression we design an instrumental form. In this example the result will be an orchestral texture in 4-4 time signature and at 72 beats per minute. I've generated a legato arpeggio motif in 4th and 5th interval leaps and a second staccato arpeggio motif that uses 3rds and their inversions the 6th interval. Since the number of parts in the instrumental form varies continually, this is a variable density setting. Listen to the resulting orchestral texture that hints slightly at a Stravinsky idiom. We continue with the two sets that contain a minor triad and a Phrygian modal trichord. Set number 3 has three modal chord structures as shown here for the minor triad on root C. This is the second 12 tone triad set that yields five different PC sets. As noted before, also these sets lie in HG4, some with a single, some with a double tritone interval. Now all hexachord combinations have a total of 5 dissonant seconds and that is the starting point for tension control in the polychord voicing. When generating a continuity I want to show you a fresh approach in this series of tutorials. This time I will write in three layers of harmony, a concept from Schillinger's strata harmony technique. Another feature is the continuous use of S2, the C sharp sus4 chord in the middle layer. I again write variable density with either 3, 6 or 9 parts. Triad sticking in the polychords is labeled above the staff. The bass part is doubled at the lower octave. And here is the sound of this progression. Now it's time to overlay an instrumental form. In this example where synthesizers dominate the texture, the rhythm is simple with many sustained chords. This continuity uses two symmetrical tonics, C and F sharp. Here is the continuity in diagram, again with chord structure numbers at the top and the actual chords in the lower half. Each of the four groups in the two tonic system presents the complete set of 12 pitch classes, with the static structure type S4 in the middle layer. The Hindemith roots are shown below the staff and reveal many root movements in thirds with no particular strong cadential tendency. It is a floating ambient type of continuity. 
In the motifs for English horn I created a chromatic pattern that selects pitches from adjacent layers. In the final modal 12 tone triad set we encounter two regular triads and two modal trichord structures, as shown here in staff notation for the minor triad on root C. Hexachord combination for this triad set leads to six different pitch class sets, plus the by now familiar dissonance classification as HG4. The number of tritone intervals is different, and again we have the 4 5 pattern in the number of dissonant seconds in the structure. In the example continuity I want to demonstrate how a dissonant polychord set can be integrated in a surrounding diatonic and tonal context, as I've done in an earlier example in this series. Here's the continuity that mixes three systems of harmony, beginning with diatonic harmony, then the polychords from 12 tone trichords and closing with Schillinger 4 part hybrid harmony. From the chord voicing I derive the Eulela tension level. In the polychord section there are two combinations. Below the staff you'll find the chord and PC set labels and the Hindemith root for the highly dissonant structures in the middle section. The voice leading is mostly stepwise, with dissonant chordal function preparation and resolution shown for the diatonic chord progression. Let's listen to this continuity. The instrumental form overlay for this continuity yields a shuffle rock rhythm in 6-8 time signature at 86 beats per minute. There is a shuffle pedal point for marimba and plucked electric guitar that uses two pitches from the middle parts. With delicate orchestration I want to prove how the highly dissonant atonal middle section can be integrated into the tonal surroundings. You will hear electric piano arpeggio patterns in the upper layer and sustained French horns in the lower layer, while the rhythm section continues the shuffle mood. For the final composition example in this tutorial we return to modal 12 tone triad set number 2 and investigate its potential for continuity creation. In the first continuity draft you recognize all three polychord pair combinations in close position voicing and with the trichords in root position. This continuity is modified by using mixed close and open position voicing and inversion in such a way that we obtain open and contrary motion in the outer parts. I've marked the distribution of the highly dissonant minor second, major seventh and minor ninth intervals in the structures.
In the third version I also applied transposition of the modal 12 tone triad set with the resulting voicing shown here, a mix of open and closed voicing and a modification of the outer parts into opening and closing contrary motion. With the tonic changing from C to D for the second half, I obtain overlapping pivot chords and pitches that connect the sections, a technique that I've demonstrated quite a few times in earlier episodes on atonal music. In the instrumental form I chose to focus on specific intervals in the three sections with polychord combinations, as another tool for dissonance control and fine tuning. We'll hear an ambient suspense texture that is dominated by modulating synthesizer sounds, supplemented with a low brass and a string section. Read along with the annotated condensed score. That brings the series on 12 tone triad sets to an end. In this third episode you saw the four modal trichord sets, that have been analyzed for their hexachord combination and polychord permutation characteristics, including the Hindemith and Ulela chord tension level classification. I've demonstrated various approaches to creating a chord structure continuity, with this episode focusing on symmetric tonic transposition, variable density and numbers of chord layers and integrating polychords in a mixed harmony system context. All sets were turned into short composition examples through the design of instrumental forms. Watching the three episodes should give you enough ideas and tools to start experimenting with the application of 12 tone triad sets in your music. If you enjoyed the discovery of this challenging pool of chord structures and their application, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to share and embed these videos. In case you would like to support my knowledge sharing and tutorial production efforts, use the link to the PayPal donation button below. Visit the website for more content or purchasing ebooks from the webshop. Thanks for watching.